Hey friend, that's not a bad start to a video, is it? Today we're going adventuring and I'm gonna walk you through kind of my go bag, my everyday carry, what's in my camera bag, my pockets and little tools that I take with me that I find helpful. And I also just wanna take you on an adventure with me around the Fraser Valley because this is home and I just absolutely love being from here. This is where I grew up, this is home. This is what made me fall in love with the mountains, with the outside. I'm excited to show, show you the home turf because I don't always brag about how much I love this place and it's, it's pretty incredible. We're gonna cover a lot in this little adventure and if you wanna jump through the different chapters, that's totally okay. We're gonna look at what's in my pockets, what tools do I carry, my writing and note-taking kit, my favorite camera gear and little knickknacks, wrapping it up with a thorough walkthrough of my favorite packing system. So I would guess that it's maybe five, five to 10% of the time that I'm actually out there on an adventure shooting stuff for work with the production company I run that makes outdoor adventure stuff for various different clients. And then the other 90% of the time I'm actually at home doing the day-to-day -day rhythm of life. That looks like a lot of editing behind a computer, a lot of writing, a lot of communicating with clients, a lot of pitching on various different projects and only getting some of them and then communicating some more. It looks like doing whatever DIY project on my free time and using YouTube as a playground to kind of take you along on my own adventures and whatever it is that I'm excited about. I think it makes a lot of sense to start with what's in my pockets. First up, Leatherman, basic stuff. My most used one is definitely the flat head for doing tripod screws. iPhone 12, uh, that's a iPhone 12 Pro, I think. It's got the lenses, wide angle. It's better than my iPhone uh, 8 Plus, I can tell you that. Got the AirPods down in there somewhere. Got a thin wallet from a friend of the channel. It's awesome, nice thin leather. This is just thick enough where I can tell it's in my pocket so I don't lose it. Microphone, running these little DAD wireless packs. They can record into the pack or transmit to the camera. These things are really awesome and helpful and they charge by USB-C. I guess it's appropriate to quickly address a quad lock case on the iPhone. I just can't speak highly enough to the handlebar mount where it twists, you put the vibration plate in there, you load up your maps on there. It's like, there isn't a better mount that I know of. I started with them on my mountain bikes, using them on motorbikes. I will say the other accessories in the ecosystem just leave a lot to be desired. They're kind of a waste of money in my opinion. The desktop stand with wireless charging head just frankly isn't that great and it costs a lot. The little ring for holding onto your phone is just a little bit too small and where am I supposed to put it when I actually mount the phone to a quad lock mount? The one additional accessory that I do really like though is the tripod mount. I've been using this a lot. I use Arca Swiss for all of my camera mounts and a fun way to use this is mounting a ball head to a magnet. And that's what I used for doing this fun overhead shot in my big explanation deeper into this video. So this one accessory is actually very helpful and worth the money. Well, we've got a lot of exploring set to do. Uh, I've got a lot of items in my bag, hopefully some that are kind of nice little surprises and I'll kind of walk you through and also show you some of my favorite spots and hopefully we run into some of my favorite people. So we're in the town of Chilliwack right now, which is basically where I grew up for over 15 years and live currently. The name for Chilliwack essentially comes from a word that means as far up the river as you can go. And I just, I love that concept, you know? It's like, hey, there's the river, let's see where it ends. Just take it all the way up. That one right down there is the Fraser River, which is kind of the largest river in British Columbia to my understanding. It is massive. Now, I personally have a soft spot for vintage Honda motorcycles. This is the only one I have right now that's running. 
The other one I have is uh, currently in pieces in process of being converted into an electric motorcycle, which if you want to see me do that, I highly recommend sticking around, subscribing, turning on notifications. But one thing about vintage bikes is that every time you come down a mountain or come off a mountain road, a lot of stuff is rattled loose. And so I actually have to tighten some things up before we continue today, but I thought now would be an appropriate time to briefly walk through some of the tools I carry with me, mainly when we're doing van life travel. So this is kind of like my mini van life kit, but this is the Explore V2 and it's carrying all the camera gear stuff that I'm using today. I'm gonna to tell you more about that later when I can show you some of the special new features about it and why I'm excited for it. I'm an ambassador for Shimoda, I'm on their pro team. This is my Wera Metric Mini Socket Set. This is quarter inch drive, which is nice and small. And what I also use alongside this is these Knipex pliers. So these are an absolute lifesaver. I'll show you how in a sec. An adjustable crescent wrench will round the bolt eventually. A vice grip will start to chew into the bolt. Well, this guy, if you clamp it down nice and tight, you can break almost every bolt at every torque setting that will exist on the bike aside from maybe the swing arm bolt. Like that might be the only one that's so tight you're not able to undo it. I'm just absolutely in love with these guys and the fact they don't round my bolts. So my speedometer rattled loose coming down the mountain. So using the pliers, the Knipex, I can adjust to the right size. Socket set comes in the other side and we're just gonna tighten right down. There we go with that guy for now. So when I need to loosen the start of this nut, you turn like a socket set, and then you go to the vertical position to quickly turn it out. And then over here in this bag as well, I also have a screwdriver. So between these main tools right here and my Leatherman, I can get most things fixed, repaired, at least tightened up to get me home. If the repair is really bad and I'm not gonna make it home, I also have a bunch of webbing, so that way I can get someone to tow me out from a back road because sometimes that's what it takes to get back down to civilization. Okay. So obviously today, I'm taking you to, to more spots than I'd normally go in a given day. No, every day of my life is not this fun. That would uh, that'd be pretty great. But a big thing I want to talk through, for me at least, creatively, uh, is writing. And if you would have told me when I was getting into video making that the, the key habit for making this whole thing work would be writing, I uh, <laughs> maybe I wouldn't have gotten into this in the first place. But without fail, when, when I'm feeling uh, the most on top of my game creatively, when the ideas are flowing, it's because I'm actively participating in the habit of writing. And I used to get this all confused where I thought you would write to just document your thoughts. And I'm like, well, I don't need to do that because they're all in my brain anyways. But actually what I've learned is I write to discover what my thoughts actually are. Okay, right now we're crossing town over to those mountains over there. Now I really do enjoy doing video storytelling for my job, for the clients that I work with, for the videos that I make here on YouTube, but it can start to feel like almost 80% of my entire life is spent sitting behind a computer and editing. Honestly, all this computer time at my workstation is what starts to grind me down the most. So actually stepping away from my workstation and preferably leaving my phone behind, either going to sit on the couch, writing at the kitchen table, or occasionally getting out of the house altogether to go to coffee shops is some of the most productive writing times that I ever have. Physical writing is a key part of my note taking and idea capture process. And I'll touch on the tools I use for that in a minute but I've always found it difficult to write quickly when I'm using my hand. And seeing as I don't enjoy the act of writing already, making it have less friction is important. So writing on an iPad has been surprisingly amazing for this in multiple ways. There's something about only having one app open on the screen at a time without having multiple windows up that makes it far more difficult for my brain to wander and get distracted. Now, one thing the iPad has not been good at in the past for me is editing scripts and behaving more like a laptop when I need it to. So this has sometimes meant that I'd carry around a laptop and an iPad so I could write into the iPad, but then pull up my laptop when I needed to do laptop type things. 
And that's where the sponsor of today's video expands the way that I can use my iPad and I no longer have to take a laptop with me. And that's Logitech with their rad combo touch cases for iPads. First and most notably, it adds a trackpad right there in the detachable keyboard. This is very helpful because now I can actually move a cursor around, which makes the task of editing documents so much easier. But a big win about the design for me and what I've always loved from Logitech is the detachable keyboard. I love typing into my iPad, but I also like using my iPad like an iPad. I like taking it out into the field with me and referencing images on it and checking scripts that I've already written and doing all of this with the keyboard always attached is just plain annoying. The Combo Touch all around is a great case for iPads. I love the fabric finish on it. I love the backlit keyboard. And I just love that it expands the way I can use my iPad that I already know and love. Thanks to Logitech for sponsoring this whole video and you can check out their products down in the links below. Okay, so coming up here is one of the other big rivers in town. And that is the Vetter River, which turns into the Chilliwack River on this side. And uh, yeah, it's very beautiful. So some friends, are starting Vetter River Brewing, and this is their future location. Obviously, they're not gonna be the only building here, but uh, there's gonna be a lot of new stuff coming in here. It's been interesting to watch Chilliwack change as now it's kind of like other people are realizing how much of an outdoor town it actually is and how easy it has access to mountains. And obviously that comes with pros and cons. Like the pros, it brings more industry to the town, more work, it brings things like breweries and fun fun little uh, businesses can actually survive and then the downsides are you've got to share all your favorite spaces with just a lot more people and the prices of everything go up so oh yeah what a beautiful day some friends and my parents are actually camping here right now we're set to join them in a couple days let's see if they're in right now <laughs> hi GoPro in the front. see ya it is here Fun. showing up at meal time what does your shirt say more chill, less whack. Okay, let's unpack my bag and talk through camera gear that I love using and little knickknacks that just make my life easier. First, let's wrap up the writing section. So my main notebook is just this moleskin notebook that's the same size as my iPad. And then I love this right in the rain index card holder. This is just awesome. This can fit inside my pocket and I kind of run my main project management around index cards and also my story development and speech writing stuff. Basically, a lot of my main outlining I do on index cards. So often I'll find myself wanting to write down little story ideas or project ideas, and I'll do that on an index card while out in the field. And then when I get home, I'll either put it in a divider to organize it or I'll pin it up on my magnetic board if it's a big project that I'm looking after. And then another product from Right in the Rain that I like is their flip open notebook holder. This is great for holding onto pens and then also their little waterproof notebooks. Okay, moving rapid fire onto some little knickknacks that I love. This Anchor USB-C hub is quite awesome. It's got a SD card reader, a micro SD card reader, lots of ports. I've had other USB-C hubs just break on me randomly and this one hasn't. For camera battery chargers, I like the little USB ones and I also store my batteries in my go bag in these chargers. For power banks, I really like the ones that have power delivery and allow you to charge the bank itself via USB-C and then also charge other things via USB-C. After having that feature, I don't want any other kind of power bank ever again. So this GPS spot device I got from Trent when he upgraded to the Garmin system. And this is just helpful because a lot of the logging roads take you out of service in my area. So I'm able to text Janelle back home, text someone for a weather report, or worst comes to worst on an adventure, I can use it to communicate with emergency services. 
The camera that I've been rolling with and absolutely love is the Sony a7S III. You, you know that I love this camera. It's really great. The cage that I run on it is this half cage from Small Rig. This cage is awesome because it's got an Arca Swiss mount built into the cage itself. And this is, this is special because it allows me to quickly mount it to any of the tripods that I already use for work but it also slides onto the Ronin RS2, which is unique because you need a special kind of Arca Swiss plate to go onto this. So the fact that a built-in plate to the cage allows me to just slide it onto the Ronin is very helpful. So I don't need the dedicated plate from DJI themselves. For mics, I use this Deity D3 Pro with a furry windscreen. For lenses, I actually did a full video breaking down my absolute favorite lenses for video with this kit and the way that I shoot. Uh, the gist of it is in my go bag, I take the 20 millimeter 1.8 and also the 55 millimeter 1.8 awesome lenses. But what I didn't talk about is filters. So these signature series filters from Polar Pro and Peter McKinnon are hands down the best filters in this price range. Just no, no questions asked. I absolutely love these things. And the image quality is pretty similar to the other variable NDs that you can get in this range. But what really just sets it and stands it apart for me is the storing mechanism the way that they made this lens hood that just slips over the filter when you're when you have the lens on your camera and you're putting it in your bag is just amazing and then when you want to take the filter off you just squeeze the rubber on the outside screw off your filter and then take the backing plate off the housing and close the filter and boom it's closed like this feature alone of being able to quickly cover the filter easily cover it when it's on your camera it's brilliantly designed thank you Tripods, I've been using the Stealth from Enduro, a small carbon tripod. Works great. It's meant for photo, but I use it for video. The legs fold down beside it, which I really like. And then when I want to do the self-vlogging thing, I just take the center column of the tripod out and hold it like a goofball. For 360 video, I've been using the Insta360 stuff, and then I've been using the GoPro for just generic GoPro-like things. For my Apple Watch, I'm running a braided solo loop band. It syncs automatically with my calendar and does a buzz notification on my wrist only for calendar notifications. And then I also use this like 10 times a day with Siri for creating calendar events in the future. And then also for setting various time-based reminders to just help me manage life and combat the downsides that come along with ADHD. Alongside the Apple Watch, I also carry with me a Garmin. And the reason for this is that if my phone battery dies, if my Apple Watch battery dies, it's a fully fledged GPS with maps. So this is great for adventuring. And it's what I normally use for tracking ski touring and running and things like that. And this watch also means a lot to me because it was a gift from Casey Neistat when I came to visit him in New York and help work on a few videos. And so uh, it's a nice reminder to me about putting in the time and doing the hard work. And, and that just means something to me. I like little mementos and the fact it came from Casey is pretty cool. Now we're gonna leave the campsite where I was visiting my parents and we're gonna head back to the shipping container so I can walk you through some of the various different bags and packing systems I use for everyday life and adventure shooting in general. And the bag I've been using today is the new Explore version two from Shimoda. And the size I've been using is the 25 liter. I will also show you some shots and walkthroughs of the 35 liter version. That's the one you see in green here. But coming back to the 25 liter, this feels weird saying as someone who has always gravitated towards larger camera bags, but its size is absolutely lovely. Fitting that sweet spot of not too big to be a burden, but not too small that you can't properly adventure with it. From those quick coffee shop visits to the last minute hike to catch a sunrise or something, it does both really, really well. Let's talk through some of the features that I like in the version two. For starters, they all have removable waist belts now, the kidney strap. And I like this because around town, I don't normally like having the strap, it just kind of gets in the way. But if I'm doing a longer hiking day, especially if I have more weight and I want my bag to just hug me securely, the waist strap is awesome. The whole harness system is really, if you haven't worn a Shimoda bag, what makes wearing them so dang comfortable. So inside the bag itself, it actually has an aluminum internal frame. And this is important because it transfers all that weight that's inside your bag down to the hip straps and transferring and evening out the load properly. The fact that you can adjust them to your torso size really makes a difference or swap them out for different body types. It's just, it really does make a difference for how comfortable your bag sits on your body. And in the subject of shoulder straps, these are just hands down the best design shoulder straps that exist. Like there isn't better camera bag shoulder straps out there. The new version two has this mesh that is just very breathable, 
but the pockets. I can't, I just can't stress how much I love these accessory pockets on the shoulder straps. The fact that they zipper close to secure your phone, a lens wipe, snacks. If you're doing shoots with radios, you can easily put a radio in. The, these little pockets just make like hiking so much more enjoyable. The bag material itself is the same wax coated stuff that is just kind of like magic to me. It is so durable and repels water really, really well. There's improvements to zipper pouches and access all around. One of the ones that I like is this little side open one where you can store filters in it for quick access instead of opening your whole bag. The design of the water bottle pouch was also improved where you can now just unclip it and roll it up and conceal it back into the bag itself, which is super awesome. I like using this to hold the legs of my tripod on the other side of my bag because the water bottle holder is on both sides. There's improved side access now with a larger opening, and this is great for on the go, fast shooting, vlogging, documentary style stuff. You can put a camera in here, a lens, just configure the bag however you want. I like having at least one lens accessible through the side access compartment and also usually my microphone for vlogging. The bag also has my favorite top open compartment, which is separate from the main area of the bag. And I put camera gear in here when I'm shooting out of it quickly, but you can access it while the bag is upright. So things like wallets, keys, basically all my knickknacks end up in this pouch at some various different point. And of course the awesome back open panel. So when you lay your bag on the dirty ground and then put it back on, you don't get all that dirt on your back. The inside is fully modular. So you can choose whatever core unit you want for the quantity of gear you want to take and then just arrange and change it for whatever you're doing on that day. The core unit that I'm using here is the medium mirrorless core unit, which is my favorite for this size of bag. And because it's a core unit, you can actually then take that out and put it in a different bag. You can put it in a roller bag. You can adapt and use it however you choose. But the mirrorless size is really great for a bag that you want to move fast with. It's challenging to express to you just how much I rely on the whole ecosystem. So things like these expand open pouches with clips on the back to hang off tripods for putting in SSDs or filters or any kind of thing like that. These stuff sacks, I put my clothes in these when I travel. I don't know how you can travel without stuff sacks. You don't have to get Shimoda ones, but like any stuff sack is just amazing. Things like these vinyl rubber extension straps. So you know that moment where you're like trying to strap something big on your bag and your strap just isn't quite big enough? Well, these rubber extensions help make it just that extra large amount and you can really fit on things like sleeping bags on a bag that maybe the straps weren't big enough to do that. Where the whole system comes together in a pretty awesome way is for airplane travel. So I prefer taking a 30 or a 35 liter bag when I'm traveling by airplane. And I take all of my camera gear with me on the plane so I can keep an eye on it. And I like taking the core unit out of the backpack and putting it into the roller bag. This way the main weight is in the roller bag as I'm going around the airport. And it's not weighing down on my back or, or making me sweaty in the airport. And then all my clothes I put in stuff sacks and I put those in the actual bag that goes on my back. So that way I only have two bags with me. It's easy to keep track of. The backpack itself is soft and squishy enough that I can put it underneath the seat in front of me and I can put the roller bag in the overhead bin. Then when I arrive wherever it is I'm traveling to, I can take the camera gear out of the roller bag, put it back into my backpack, and then I'm ready to go adventuring around with my bag. And a little backstory behind Shimoda and why their bags are so great is because of the designer behind Shimoda, Ian Miller. You could easily argue that he's the most established adventure camera bag designer of the past decade, bar none. If you don't know him, you definitely know his bags. You've seen them all around the world. He previously designed all of my favorite camera bags from F-Stop. And so his experience and just his knowledge is at the absolute top of the adventure camera bag world. So when Ian reached out years ago that he was starting this new bag company, Shimoda, and he wanted me to help test and give feedback on the early prototypes, I was just really excited because I already liked his bags and the opportunity to give feedback and be a part of the development of new bags is just, come on, that's just like the most exciting thing for someone who loves bags. So I helped launch the original Explore series on Kickstarter and I've been on the pro team ever since, but it is one of those things that bag systems are personal and when you find one that you love, Oh man, that just, that's a really good feeling. So I'll close off this bag section here, which has really just turned into a love letter to the Shimoda ecosystem by saying that for the more aggressive outdoor work I do, like ski touring or carrying lots of video equipment, I still use the more aggressive line of bags from Shimoda called the Action X series. 
I have a whole video on this bag already on the channel, uh, but essentially this is just their more aggressive featured bag system. But a cool part with these new version two Explore bags is a lot of the great features that Ian implemented into the Action X series are now also being grafted in on the Explore series. So you're getting a lot of those higher end features from the Action series in the Explore series, and that is really awesome. Oh man, it is so fun chasing the sunset as you explore these logging roads. It's just, how is this for a mountain road? <laughs> this is awesome. Oh man, I just, I love just picking a mountain and going up it. It's just so cool. What a gift. And most of the, most of the time that I've lived in Chilliwack, I haven't had a four by four and I still, well, I still don't have a four by four and to go up logging roads in the past, I'd have to go with friends or just hope that, that it was mellow enough that the van could make it and the van can't make it up many of them. Um, but now that I, I've joined Vintage Enduro Club, I've now got uh, access to a lot more terrain and traveling through it quickly instead of uh, pedaling my whole way there. It, it's just so fun. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm really loving this. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, adventure day with me. Um, if you're new here, it's great to have you. Thanks for sticking around till the end of this video. If you like stuff like this, I, I highly recommend you watch our, our Road to Alaska series where we took our adventure van all the way up to Alaska. Those are some of my favorite videos that uh, that are, are pretty well made. I'm pretty excited about them. And also our van build series is a lot of fun. Um, I've got a playlist down below of some of my favorite videos, some winter camping videos, a bunch of different stuff, but uh, that's, a good, that's a good place to get started. You can also see some of the finished works that I've done as far as like stories and things like that in the slacklining space, if you wanna check that out. So those are good places to start with my work. And I'd love to hear from you if you're new down in the comments. And I also just want to say a massive thank you to the members of our channel, the people who help make our videos happen in a very real way. So thank you. You guys are awesome. If you want to become a channel member, I think it's a great investment of your time and money. Uh, I share little behind the scenes videos just with channel members and kind of this little back and forth where I ask for advice and input on things. And I just value that so much. So thank you to our channel members. And uh, I think that's where, I think that's where this video is going to come to an end. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. And remember, life's better when you make stuff. Peace.